The August 5, 2019 Pew Study report shows that the majority of Catholics do not believe in the Real Presence. According to this study, 69% of all self-identified Catholics said they believe the bread and wine used at Mass are not Jesus, but only symbols of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The other 31% believed in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, known as transubstantiation. Still, one in five Catholics, 22%, reject the idea of transubstantiation, even though they know about the Church's teaching. In 1862, St. John Bosco had a remarkable dream. He saw the Catholic Church as a mighty flagship in the midst of a great battle. Smaller enemy ships were bombarding it with books and pamphlets, bombs and cannons, and trying to ram it off course. At the same time, huge waves and fierce winds buffet the flagship at the helm the Pope strained every muscle to steer his ship between two columns in the sea. On the smaller column stood a statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary. On the other far loftier column was a large host. In spite of all adversity, the Pope anchored the flagship to thick chains hanging from the two columns. At that, the enemy ships panicked and fled. Wild wind and seas grew calm. St. John Bosco explained that the Church will endure grave trials and persecutions. The Church's enemies will try their utmost to destroy her. But two things will preserve the Church in that hour, devotion to Mary and frequent communion. Don Bosco's vision illustrates that the greatest treasure in the Catholic Church is the Eucharist. In it, Jesus humbly assumes the appearance of bread and wine, proving his desire to be bodily connected to us. Because it is Jesus himself, the Eucharist is the heart of the Catholic faith. The Catechism of the Catholic Church calls the Eucharist the source and summit of Christian life and the sum and the summary of our faith. It is hard to imagine that any Catholic could misunderstand a central doctrine of his faith, but the alarming trend of the lack of belief in the real presence before the current Pew's research has already been seen since 1992. According to the 1992 Gallup poll, the numbers show that the majority of Catholics are confused in their beliefs about Christ's presence in the Eucharist. According to the poll, 30% believe they are really, truly receiving the body, blood, soul and divinity of Jesus under the appearance of bread and wine. 29% believe they are receiving bread and wine that symbolize the body and blood of Jesus. 10% believe they receive bread and wine in which Jesus is also present. 24% believe they are receiving what has become Christ's body and blood because of their personal belief. Any well-informed Catholic will recognize that only the first option chosen by the 30% represents true Catholic teaching. The other options represent various Protestant beliefs. In other words, 70% of all Catholics in this country 
all erroneous beliefs about Christ's presence in the Eucharist. The problems increased dramatically among younger Catholics. According to a recent New York Times and CBS poll of Catholics who attend Mass regularly, the percentage of people who believe decreases as age decreases. Seventy percent of this last age group believe the Eucharist is just a symbol. What does this say about how we are passing the faith on to our children? Only one in six of this age group accepts the fundamental doctrine of the real presence. This loss of faith among young and old alike explains the tremendous lack of devotion, reverence, and appreciation so many Catholics show towards Holy Communion. For the last 2,000 years, the Catholic Church has taught that Jesus Christ is really and truly present in the Eucharist. Under the appearance of bread and wine, Christ is completely present in His body and blood as well as His soul and divinity. The moment the priest repeats Christ's words of consecration, this is my body and this is my blood, God miraculously changes ordinary bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. All the outward appearances and sensible qualities of the bread and wine remain. This transformation of substance is called transubstantiation. In the transubstantiation, the substance of the bread and wine is changed into the substance of Christ's living body and blood. The bread and wine are gone, replaced by the real presence of Christ, while only the appearances remain. Jesus is present wholly and entirely in each of the Eucharistic elements as well as in each of its parts, the smallest sliver of the consecrated host or the tiniest drop from the chalice contains the whole Christ. We can receive Jesus under the form of bread alone, under the form of wine alone, or both together. In each case, we receive the same perfect sacrament the same Jesus into our bodies and souls. Because Jesus is truly present, we adore the Eucharist as God. That's why we genuflect or bow deeply before the tabernacle. That's why the church reserves the consecrated hosts with such care. That's why the church carries the consecrated hosts in processions and exposes them for solemn adoration. Christ's presence in the Eucharist begins at the moment of consecration and lasts as long as the appearances of bread and wine remain. When consecrated host is digested or dissolved and no longer has the qualities of bread, it is no longer Jesus. The Eucharistic presence of Christ begins at the moment of the consecration and endure as long as the Eucharistic species subsist. When we receive the Holy Communion, Jesus remains in our bodies for about 15 minutes. 
we should adore Him within us as long as He is sacramentally present. For a short time, we are living tabernacles of the All Holy God. Because the Eucharist is our God and Savior Jesus Christ, we dare not receive Him in a state of mortal sin. To receive Jesus worthily, we must be in a state of grace. If we have committed a mortal sin, we cannot receive Holy Communion without first receiving absolution in the sacraments of confession. We can't be indifferent about Christ's presence in the Eucharist. Remember that this issue separates Catholics from virtually all Protestants. If Christ is only symbolically present in the Eucharist, as most Protestants believe, then Catholics are guilty of idolatry, worshipping mere bread and wine as God Himself. But if Christ is really present in the Eucharist, then those who lack belief, like most non-Catholics, are guilty of not recognizing, denying and rejecting their Lord and Savior in the Eucharist. But what's so special about Christ's presence in the Eucharist? Isn't Jesus present everywhere? To answer this common objection, we must distinguish three different ways Jesus can be present. Jesus is present everywhere as God through His knowledge, power and essence. This is called God's natural presence. Jesus is present spiritually in those who are in the state of grace. Jesus is present in His flesh and blood, soul and divinity. In His glorified human body, Jesus is present only in two places, at the right hand of the Father in heaven and in the Holy Eucharist on earth. The primary reason we should believe in the real present is that the infallible teaching authority of the Catholic Church has proclaimed it for 2,000 years. Catholics believe and historical evidence proves the Catholic Church is the one true Church established by Jesus Christ to continue His work of teaching and sanctifying the world. Jesus appointed apostles with Peter as the head to oversee His Church. He entrusted to them the fullness of the truth and fullness of the means of salvation. Jesus gave the Apostles His own teaching authority. Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with them and teach them until the end of time. The apostles were ordained successors known as bishops to carry on Christ's work of teaching, 
sanctifying and governing. With the help of the Holy Spirit, this unbroken line of bishops has continued to use its Christ-given authority to guard, interpret, and proclaim the gospel of Jesus to the present day. This apostolic church gave us the Bible, determined on its own authority which books were and were not inspired. As St. Augustine said, I myself would not believe in the gospel if the authority of the Catholic Church did not move me to do so. The Church gives us the sacraments, the channels of grace. This same authoritative Church assures us that the doctrine of the real presence is true. If we accept the teaching authority of the Catholic Church, we must accept the Eucharist as she defines it. Obviously, non-Catholic Christians do not accept the teaching authority of the Catholic Church. Sadly, many Catholics, out of ignorance or lack of belief, reject it as well. <laughs>